Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. Now, the state of Christianity in the world needs a great deal of restoring because it's falling into the hands of atheist ministers. Standing in the pulpit, supposedly those who are to teach the way of God, but they reject it and dismiss it and neglect it. Now, we've covered some of this report concerning the Dutch ministers, and it's really very astounding and hard to believe that such a thing as atheist ministers rejecting Christ rejecting God. What are they teaching? What are they doing? Listen to some of this report again here, because this is going to stand your hair on end. And this is why the world is in confusion. This is why people don't know what's going on in the world. Now, you can know. On our other website, cbcg.org, we have many sermons on prophecy many sermons on true Christian living, in-depth study that is far more than you would get at any university or theological seminary in the world. Because those churches and seminaries are laced and infiltrated with men who don't believe God, who don't believe the Word of God, who don't live by the Word of God, who preach a false Christianity. Because unless you have the true biblical teachings from the Bible, the way the Bible shows that it should be done, you've got a counterfeit Christianity. And especially if you have an atheist minister standing in the pulpit, or as one Catholic diocese, they ran a survey and found that in this large diocese, 250 of their priests were pedophiles. Now, do you think that God is going to honor one single thing that they say or do? How can you have a system that's supposed to represent God when they don't keep the commandments of God and even brag they don't need the Bible. When you require the priests and the nuns to live unnatural lives of vows of celibacy which they cannot keep. When the Bible says that an overseer, there's no such thing as a father priest. Jesus said, call no man on earth your father. And there are not priests in the New Testament church. There are overseers, there are evangelists, there are pastors, there are teachers. But God requires that they be married. And Paul wrote, to avoid sexual immorality, let every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. God doesn't speak through them. They don't represent God. Only those who teach what is in the Bible and teach it correctly are those that are teaching God's way and are ministers and servants of God. Now, let's see what else they say here concerning biblical Christianity. Dutch ministers featured in this report dismiss the doctrines of biblical Christianity as outside of the people, rigid things we can't touch anymore. Really? What does the New Testament tell us? What did Paul write about concerning basic biblical Christianity? Let's see a couple of things that Jesus taught. Let's see a couple of things that Paul wrote. Let's first of all go to John 14. Here's basic biblical Christianity, and you need to understand this. All of those other ways out there are false. They're not true. They're not of God. And their fruits are now showing it. As the Bible says, you will know them by their fruits. 
And I want you to understand this because, as we have seen, Jesus was God manifested in the flesh, and he was the Lord God of the Old Testament before he became the Son of God, the Son of Man. And he came to reveal God the Father, who is not revealed in the Old Testament. And he came to bring it so that we can have a personal relationship with them through prayer, through study, through living our lives the way God wants, through receiving the Holy Spirit of God, through believing the truth and living the truth, loving the truth and loving God the Father and loving Jesus Christ. Here's what Jesus said. On the very night of his last Passover before he went out to be arrested at midnight, and to become the sacrifice for the sin of the whole world. Here's what he told his disciples. Verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I want you to think about this. How is your life? What way do you walk in? What are the foundational things that you believe in? Hmm? I am the way. That means there is no other way. That means that you cannot attach human opinions to the Word of God and make those things dogma to be obeyed. Jesus Christ, walking in his footsteps, following his way, living like he lived, is the way. He also says the truth, that is the truth of the word of God. You see, God is a God of truth who cannot lie. And yet lying men, rather than repenting and believing, throw him away and think that their lies and their imaginations and their foolish evilness is worth more than God's way. And yet they stand in the pulpits and pretend to represent God and teach the people. What truth do you hear from the pulpit? Now notice, and the life, that is the way to eternal life. There's only one way. That is through Jesus Christ. Not through any church organization whether it be Protestant or Catholic or Orthodox or any other religion in this world, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And until you come to the conviction of it and believe it, you haven't even started to take the first step toward true Christianity. Now notice in verse 15, if you love me, keep the commandments, namely my commandments. Do you do that? And if you do, how do you do that? See, these are basic Christian doctrines which must be within. Not basic Christian doctrines that we set outside of our lives. See, God wants us converted, changed. He wants us to grow in grace and knowledge. And the ultimate thing that God wants to have as the way of truth, because his laws are true, his commandments are true, his precepts are true, and everything about God is true. And so that you can live your life the way that God wants to, you must be converted. That means you must have your mind changed. Now, the buzzword today is transformation. Now, transformation in the world means you're transformed into following these New Age thoughts, these New Age doctrines, these atheistic rejections, and, and it'll transform your life. God wants the transformation of your mind through his word, through his spirit. Now let's come to Hebrews 10. Here's what God wants because God is love. God is truth. God is righteousness. God cares for you. But the question becomes, do you believe God and want to choose his way? You see? Let's see what God wants. 
and ask yourself the question, since all the laws and commandments of God are truth, every word that Jesus spoke is true, every word that is in the Bible has been God-breathed. And even in some of the translations that men have tried to corrupt for their own uses, there's still enough of the truth that you can find the basics. But here's the covenant that God wants with you, because God loves you. God wants to redeem you. God wants to forgive you. And God wants to change and convert your mind and your way of living through his spirit and through his word. Now here in Hebrews 10 and verse 16, God says, this is the covenant that I will establish with them after those days, says the Lord. I will give my laws into their hearts, and I will inscribe them in their minds. That is a complete changing of your minds. Now, you go to cbcg.org, and you download the two sermons, The Washing of the Water by the Word. And that's how God cleanses our minds and our hearts how God erases all of those memories that are in our minds, but you need the Spirit of God to do it, you see. And you need to keep the commandments of God the way God intended. Let's read it here in 1 John, the second chapter, verse 3. By this standard, we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. What about you? Do you do that? Do you know the Ten Commandments? Do you know how Jesus amplified them so that they are spiritually applied? Are they being written in your heart and in your mind? Now, here's the truth from Christ, inspired to the Apostle John, and he had plenty of experience in this because there were false preachers back in the days of the Apostles. Antichrist back in the days of the Apostle John. Apostle John said, there are many antichrists. <laughs> and now look at the world. It's being filled with antichrist and Satan worship again. Notice verse 4. The one who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. How about that? Not sent from God. And yet people believe that because they're religious ministers and profess the word Christianity, claim that they are Christian. Now, there may be some nice people out there who claim those things. But understand this, human niceness is not the righteousness of God. Human kindness is not the graciousness of God. Verse 5. On the other hand, if anyone is keeping his word, truly in this one, the love of God is being perfected. By this means, we know we are in him. That's the guarantee. God doesn't want you to go on just some fluff, fluff belief because someone says so or states so, okay? God wants you to know because you have proved it. Now, notice what else is required. Verse 6. Anyone who claims to dwell in him is obligating himself to walk even as he himself walked. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What way are you walking in? How is your life? Here these ministers reject God. They insist that the real meaning of Christianity can survive even if its central truth claims are denied. What a perfect trap for people to fall into and end up worshiping Satan the devil. Satan the devil has always been there to try and get in and mislead people, and boy, he's at it big time now. One layperson cited in the report celebrated the liberation of Christianity from truth claims, allowing her to recreate the faith in my own way of thinking, my own way of doing. Just like the Bible says, 
when everyone does what is right in his own eyes, everything falls apart. And what does a person do, man or woman, when this is done? They proclaim themselves to be God. They proclaim themselves to be greater than God. And as the Bible says, shall the created say to the creator, what are you making? I don't need you anymore. Really? When all the events of the end time begin unfolding and they're going to be coming like a great tsunami wave. Now, if you go back and remember what happened at Fukushima in Japan, when that tsunami wave came, it was completely irresistible. Nothing could stop it. It wiped everything out as it went inland, destroyed. That's how it's coming. Lawlessness, government, Wars, famines, plagues, droughts, floods, all increasing and coming like a tsunami. Just like these religionists, the one world religion of Satan the devil is going to come like a tsunami. And it's going to wipe out everything in its path. So then, in Holland or the Netherlands, Christianity has become a somethingism. Wow. What is a somethingism? Can you believe, can, can, can you wrap your thoughts around that? Continuing now in the report, the majority of Dutch citizens, he explains, desire some form of spirituality, but not the God of the Bible. Ho! Oh. All right, regardless of what country you live in, but let's just take the Netherlands. What's happening to your country? What's happening to your people? Regardless of where you live, you have these kind of attitudes? No, for sure. The judgment of God is coming just like we read. You want to be there when the tidal wave of evil comes? Continuing now in this report, there must be something between heaven and earth, but to call it God or even a personal God for the majority of Dutch is a bridge too far. Think of that. They have gone so far away from God, they can't even entertain the thought that God is real, that God is personal. And the thing that they need more is the love of God, which they can't receive until they repent. And their repentance is not going to come until their lives are threatened. Let's hope that they change before then. Who knows if they will? Is it possible? I don't know. So what they have said now is this. Professor Stoffels went on to argue that Christian churches in the Netherlands are in a market situation, he explained. They can offer their ideas to a majority of the population which is interested in spirituality or some kind of religion. Think on that. That's why we need to ask ourselves, where are we? What do we think? How are we before God? What does God want of us? And that's the very reason why we have church at home. You're not going to get anything from church. So you have church at home where you can control the circumstances, where you can read the Bible, where you can come to understand it, where you can prove it. And we have all the tools necessary to help you. We have the book called Holidays, God's Holy Days, which? The book, Judaism, a revelation of God or religion of men. We have the Bible, the Holy Bible in its original order, which is the most accurate translation in English today. 
Now, all of those things are available right here on Church at Home. So you need to begin to dig in to the Word of God. You need to begin to understand the Word of God. And you need to begin with praying to God. And the way you start is get on your knees and say, Oh, God, help me. I don't know what to say, but I'm in confusion and I am lost and I know you love me. So give me of your spirit to lead me so I can come out of this morass that I am in. That's how you begin. That's why church at home. So this is Fred Coulter saying, thank you for inviting me into your home. So until next time, so long, everyone.